Greetings, loved ones. Let's take a chance. It's time for Amanda <laughs> Exclusivo. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Amanda Exclusivo. I am here with my new friend, Demi White. Hi, Demi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It seems like everything that you're doing during quarantine, you are living it up and doing super well. No, for real. Thank because you. You and your dad started something so amazing called Quarantunes. And the fact that you're 17 years old blows my mind and you're doing this. It's amazing. <laughs> well, thank you so much. One, I am so honored to be on here and speak with of someone course. that's closer to my age. It's like a new <laughs> energy and I love it. Um, but yeah, my quarantine is, has not been your traditional quarantine. Although I know. I don't really think you could say traditional because it's everyone's first time. What you're time doing is not traditional, just saying. <laughs> no, no, it's not. But um, I turned 17 at the beginning of quarantine, March 27th. No one knew what Zoom was. Everyone was like really, really strict with social distancing. People thought that the pandemic would be over within, within like two weeks. Um, that's a lie. Really, that's a here. lie. We're like five or six months in. I don't know how to do math anymore, but um, it's okay. I just look at my pill box to find out what day of the week it is because I just don't know anymore for real. I'm the exact same way. The other day I was like, can someone tell me what day it is tomorrow? <laughs> they were like Monday and I was like, why do I need to know that? Exactly. Um, anyways, um, for my 17th birthday, my dad hired this piano player named Dario to kind of <laughs> do a virtual piano bar because he was looking for some work since all the bars shut down and mm -hmm. contacted my dad and my dad was like oh what a fun way to do this um to do something for Demi's birthday so it was a surprise party which I actually oh, that's so nice I knew about it I didn't my dad was like do you want to do this I was like that sounds so fun let's do it but I'll give you my friend's phone number so I can like not plan this and be responsible for it if it turns out <laughs> very badly so I went on at like six o'clock. I had like 40 friends on in gallery view. It was so embarrassing. Everyone was looking at me like, literally it was so awkward. And I was like, dad, I love you so much. This is so great, but can we turn this off or like press pause and like get my friends off of it? Like this, the gesture was so nice, but it was just so weird because nobody knew what was going on. There was some Don't Stop Believing, some Billie Eilish, just a lot of music playing. And then my dad paused it and we resumed it with some of his friends and clients and just people that have been in our life, like family, high school friends, all of that stuff. And I spent the rest of my birthday with people four times my age. Um, <laughs> very great. Dario was playing some music. And then my dad called his friend, Debbie Gibson, who's this 80s singer to come on. And I know like, her. Yeah, she's awesome. She, I have, I'm so thankful for her because she really, really helped me discover myself, especially through this. Um, but she came on and she started singing and then someone added John Mayer, which oh my I love so, so, so much. So I was having the best birthday. I was so happy that my friends didn't like it. And we were just <laughs> lifting people's spirits through that. And it turned into a thing that we kept doing because we realized that music was Live Aid. So then we did three more and it was just Dario, the piano bar player and everyone hanging out. And then we started to ask more people and reach out to other celebrities to come join us. And mm -hmm. it got a little bit of momentum and traction. And then one day I was like, I am so lucky to be watching this. And I'm so fortunate. There are so many people suffering right now we have to do this for charity. It's turned into, literally we were producing concerts weekly. I mean, lots of technical glitches and the casual unmuting and muting them, like having to mute themselves. But um, we started that and I said, I wanted to raise $10,000. We raised 33 on that call. And by the next day we had raised 100 and oh, I'm sitting here today, $7 million in a couple months later. And wow. I'm just so thankful for the experience and letting my voice be heard and just what I've gotten to do with my dad and what we've built over quarantine. I can't even like grasp it at times what we've done. I know, it's just amazing how you get all these amazing performers on Quarantunes. It's, it's wonderful. And is the entertainment industry something that you wanna go into like your dad? Well, my dad is a talent agent and I do have a lot of respect for that field, especially seeing him do a lot of work over 
quarantine, I don't think I want to be an agent per se, which I thought I did. I wanted to be like an agent and then I wanted to be a director because I did this program last summer and I fell in love with film and kind of like sending a message out through film. And that's kind of what Quarantunes has been just in a different medium. So prior to quarantine, I wanted to be a director so badly. I thought that was my fate. I thought that was my path in life. But now after doing this with my dad and kind of being the one in front of the camera, I don't want to be an actress or anything, but I definitely <laughs> want to use my voice and make a difference in the world, whether it's a um, social impact or starting my own nonprofit. I don't know whether that will be connected to the entertainment industry or not, but I definitely like the blend and the intersection between the two. So I think going forward, I will look more into that. And you have so much time to decide. You're only 17. You yeah. have a lot of time. I know. What I'm realizing is i am just got to go with the flow. I don't have control of what's happening right now. I'm very, very lucky. I just have to see where life takes me because I can't plan out my whole entire life. Because if I were going to, this wouldn't have been in it. And I think you're a great person. I, you really are. You're, <laughs> I'm so happy now to call you one of my friends. Yes. No, for well, real. And I want to ask you something. One of my favorite memories of Quarantunes, I know you've probably had so many favorites. I don't want to dive into every single moment, but one of talk mine, about it. Okay. Well, one of my favorites was when you and your dad were at the Hollywood Bowl. Nobody was there. What was that like? That was the most surreal moment of my yeah. whole life. So the Hollywood Bowl is definitely a staple for Los Angeles, one of the biggest venues in the world. Every performer wants to perform there. And my dad and I and my family, we would go every summer and see the shows, whether it was the Sound of Music sing-along <laughs> or to see Gavin DeGraw perform, like all, all different types of performances. We would it's go- so much fun there. I've been there it's twice. So it's so great. And you get to bring like the little picnic tables. And I know. Yeah, it's so cute. And the fact that it was shut down for the first time in 98 years, is so upsetting and my dad as a joke was talking to his friend and was like yeah we got to do something bigger and then he read that the hollywood bowl was closed and his friend was like why don't you do the hollywood bowl and he was like yeah for sure like rw quarantines takes the hollywood bowl that's such a joke but we <laughs> reached out <laughs> we reached out to someone and they loved it so we ended up doing we ended up being the only people performing there the whole entire summer. So RW Quarantine oh opened and closed the Hollywood Bowl summer 2020. Um, and we were able to have a live performer there, which was Kenny Loggins. And then the iconic Gustavo Dudamel, who is a conductor. And Mayor Garcetti actually came with us. That's all I have to say. It was crazy. But we did it for No Kid Hungry. And we also paired it with YOLA, which is the organization for like the Youth Orchestra of Los Angeles. So we were helping a lot of kids through the Hollywood Bowl and I just felt so lucky and blessed to be there. That probably was the best day of my whole entire life. Oh, was that the most meaningful charity that you guys have donated to or what, what's been your favorite one that you and your dad decided to donate to? I think all of the charities are special in their own way. We've created a bunch of different friendships through them all and they're all helping a lot of amazing people, whether it's frontline workers or doing it through food banks or the homeless shelters. I couldn't pick one because they all help in so many different ways. Absolutely. But, oh, I'm sure that's like picking your favorite performer that you've had on quarantines too. That's also tough to decide because you've had so many. <laughs> we've had over 200. 200? We over 200. We used to do them twice a week. Now we only do them once a week, sometimes twice. It's been a little sporadic over the summer. But um, yeah, it's definitely a live aid and performers are so willing to do it because it's for a good cause and it's so authentic. It's just like this, literally just a conversation between people and music. Absolutely. What's it like booking guests for quarantines? How does that process go? So my dad is not a music agent and obviously I don't really have ties to the music industry either. Oh. So it is such a chase and it's so fun until like no one really says no because it is for such a good cause it's kind of like my dad and i were watching saint elmo's fire at the very beginning of quarantine and then um we were like oh we should get john parr on because he wrote this song it was just from us watching a movie and then we reached out and he said yes yeah. so it's through the things that we love it's kind of like we're listening to a song we're watching a tv show 
oh, we should get this person. And then we try and get them and hopefully they say yes, which they have. So it's just been really fun to see that we're capable of a lot more than we ever thought we were. Like when this started, it was just to raise people's spirits. And now it's like a full on fundraiser all the time. And it's, it's such a great event. And my family and I love coming to it. Every single one of them has been amazing. And I'm just curious for those of the people that don't know how to get onto quarantines, is it a public event for everybody or what? So we want to make it public as much as we do, but because the artists don't always have rights to the songs, there's a lot of copyright issues if we do make it a public event. So also we, when we did the Hollywood Bowl, we did it up to 1000 people and my dad's computer crashed. Zoom cannot do that. We've been trying to figure out ways that we could do something public, but the actual quarantines themselves legally can't be public due to like the performers singing. Every time we choose a different organization, we try to bring in new people. So it's not just the same crowd watching every single time in order to cheer up other people. But a lot of people have DM'd the quarantines account that I run and they're like, how can I get on? And I just say, hey, send me your email. And I put them on it. Like we're really not trying to be exclusive or elitist whatsoever. It just happens that we can't make them public. Right. Because I know that there are some days where it's mostly a private event rather than mm -hmm. everybody gets to join in, like watching a big television event. It's yeah. more of the world's biggest Zoom party right now. <laughs> Seriously. But I think the fact that it's so like closely knit makes it so much more special or tightly knit with like a group of people, it just feels like you're actually at an event and it's not a produced concert. It's very, very fun and just authentic. And you'll see people typing in the chats or like making dinner or um, there's been someone who's walked across the screen naked. Once. I saw that guy. <laughs> and I saw someone on the treadmill, someone yeah. taking a nap, literally like you can see everything on Zoom. It's great. I know it's so not awesome. only for the concerts, but for what everyone's doing at home. Yeah, it's kind of just fun to like scroll through the pages and just see who's on there. I know, it's it's interesting. And then there's also like the old people that look up at the camera and they're just, you know. Like, yeah, if you get on early enough. enough. I don't, I don't know. Know. If you get on early enough or wait until the end, you will hear my grandma either crying or saying how proud she is of my dad and I. And it's like a White's family reunion at the very beginning. That's so nice. It must be so special for you and your family to keep this going. So after quarantine life is over, are you going to continue? So basically my dad and I have been talking about this for a while. Mm -hmm. We never want to stop giving back and we love putting on these shows. And we think, actually, we know that obviously fundraising is going to be very, very, very different coming up. It's not like we can all go to this event and charities can't have galas anymore. It will have to take like a place virtually. So right. what my dad and I have been doing, I think is gonna be around for a very, very long time. It just depends on the state of the world, but we have been asked to chair a couple of galas virtually through quarantines and pair with them because all these organizations and hospitals and nonprofits can't have galas. So we kind of feel called upon to keep doing this as long as we can and then maybe when things kind of go back to normal, we can do a show in person with a couple people and have it be public. Be fun. Stream it. Yeah, I definitely think there's a lot to play with going forward. Absolutely. Well, I really hope that you keep going with this because it's it's just so thank much fun you. and everything you're doing at such a young age is such a huge accomplishment. So thank, thank you for you what so you do. It's, it's really amazing what you and your dad have been doing. You're the sweetest. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Of course, of course. Well, I can't thank you enough, really, for hanging out with me today. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with you. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought before you go, we could do something fun, kind yeah, of let's do it. I'm known for. Um, so what I do, it's called the speed round. Demi, oh what's your must-have hair product? A hairbrush. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so creative. <laughs> okay, it's a minute, okay. Um, okay, regular or electric toothbrush? Regular. Nice. Your favorite designer? Mayor, call me. What's your favorite <laughs> store? Aritzia. Mine too! <laughs> okay. What's your secret hobby? I can touch my tongue to my nose, that's a secret talent. Um, I don't have any hobbies. <laughs> okay, what's your favorite movie? Um, I hate this question. Um, I, 
Begin Again. That's That wasn't the one I was thinking of, but I like that movie. What's your favorite childhood toy? Um, I have a stuffed animal. It's not really a toy, but his name is Mr. Lion, and he was my favorite. I love that. Can you can you sing? Nope, I have nodes, like the girl in Pitch Perfect. <laughs> oh, the time's up. Let's keep going. You want you want more? I want more. I can do this every single day. Oh, oh really? Oh my god, I would love every that. <laughs> Definitely come. Like for re- I'm serious. We can do. I'm it. not joking. I will. I will do it. Oh my god, I would love that. This has been so fun. I can't hang out with anyone. So this is like my version of hanging out and I love it. I love it too. It's so much fun to hang out with you. Really. I want you to come back. I'm serious. Please, please forget about me and come back and hang. I will never forget about you. Once a Quarantunes member, always a friend. There you go. (laughs) That's what I said. There you go. (laughs) I can't thank you enough, Demi, really. No, thank you so much for having me.